Now here are some examples for the improvements in the modeling of Maya 2018. I'm using the model of the Witcher here and you see that I've removed parts of the lower body including the belt and I will now reconstruct that portion and I've left the original geometry in there as a template to have an idea about the shape. First of all when we look at the modeling toolkit here we see that some of the things from the UV toolkit are also in here. So to mention are the help pop-ups that we see. Um, so here's a simple one and um, on some of the items you see a more complex one including a help window that sometimes even includes a video that shows you what uh, what these tools do and what and how to use them. And also you can use shift and left mouse button click to open the options on these tools so there's no longer the need to go into the pull down menu to open these options. Now let's have a look at the geometry. You see that the, the lower body here, I need to still to model a little bit on that. And I will first start my sculpting brush, the grab tool to start to model or bring this a little bit more into the shape that the original geometry had here. And you see I'm pulling and pushing a little bit. New in Maya 2018 is also the fact that when you hold the control key, you see that the cursor circle changes to white and this is no longer a twist functionality this will now move the geometry in and out which is very convenient because I don't no longer have to go to a side view to do that I can just grab it from wherever I am and move the geometry in and out to match the shape that I'm looking for so I'm pulling everything a little bit out here and then check the back of the character but that looks okay for me so I'm going to leave that there and leave the tool and the next step after I have turned off the template here. The next step is that I will assign a Lambert material which in my opinion is much better in some cases of modeling because the highlight is some, sometimes a little bit distracting. So to go on with the lower body here I will now select edges and double click on the edge to select the whole edge loop around it. And then I want to extrude this edge and there's a quick way, a quick method of doing that. Now when I hold, when I hover over one of these handles here and I hold the shift key, you see that my cursor is telling me that I can now extrude by just pulling that when I hold the shift key. I'll undo that and double click on the move tool to show you the tool settings here because it may not be turned on by default. The shift drag to extrude components. This one, the second one here is not on by default. You see there's another one shift drag to duplicate objects. So you can take a whole object and shift drag it to make a duplicate of that object. So make sure you have that turned on because it's a really handy tool. You can also use it with a scale tool for example. So I'm holding the shift key and scale to extrude and then go to the move tool, extrude downwards and then we go back to the scale tool and extrude inwards again. So that's a really fast workflow. I really like this ability to doing that fast. In the next step I will soften all the normals here. So soften harden edges. In the option box here for soften harden edges there's a new option for texture borders. So you can set the soften harden status of the edges by texture borders also in Maya 2018. In this case we just soften all the edges and that's fine. Okay. And now we want to reconstruct the belt here. And with the belt I have a little bit of a problem. So when I cut across the geometry using the multi-cut tool, I can do this, just cut across the geometry to cut the geometry for a belt. I would adjust it so that, you know, the, the I'm, I'm looking more or less horizontal on the lower part of the body like this one here and then use the multi-cut and do something like you know, this cut and then a parallel cut like so. It looks okay from here, but when I turn around and look at the backside, you see that the belt is much wider here because it, it's a perspective camera. You know, this part here is closer to the camera and that's, that's why the belt here is narrower than on the back. So I'm not happy with this one here. I can undo that. Another way would be to go and say, we are using a front camera. So here in the center of the hotbox, you have the front view. 
hit A to see all the geometry and 4 to see the wireframe. You see, looking from the front view, the back of the character is also a little bit up. So we need to rotate the camera. But when I try to do that, you see that, oh, orthographic views are currently locked. Currently locked means that you can actually unlock them. So here in the view tool, in the camera tools, tumble tool, open the option box, you can unlock this orthographic views and it's still a stepped rotation by five degrees. And you can see I can now rotate my orthographic view by five degree steps. And you see one step of five degrees is exactly what I'm what I'm looking for. So I'm leaving the tool, go into the multi cut tool and then cut the whole thing like so and then do a parallel cut. Maybe like so. OK. So if the belt is not wide enough, I can still go into the channel box, into the editor and take these entries here of the um, of the poly cuts and then uh, the wide uh, translation here and move that around. Look here, I have my poly cut and that way I can adjust how wide my belt's going to be, maybe like so. And this way, I'm pretty sure that, you know, the front is the same width as the back of the character. So let's go hold the, hold the space bar again, go into the perspective. And now we need to clean up some of these edges. So you see that the horizontal edges that went through the character's body are now, you know, cutting through the belt. And I want to remove that because it's not contributing to the overall shape. And it's also a little bit distracting and creates too many polygons anyway. So what I do now is to select edges. So one of these, for example, and then double click on another edge to select the whole edge loop between the two, because I cannot just select around the whole object. It will take the shortest distance, which in this case is not what I want. The shortest distance would be this, this short piece over here. So I have to go around the character. So when I remove that with the delete key, it looks okay to us. But when I turn on the vertices, you see that all, all these vertices are left in there when I just use the delete key and I don't want that. So let me undo that. Here are my edges. When I shift right mouse button, I can do a delete edge. And now you see that the vertices have disappeared. So the vertices are no longer in there. So let's go back to edge selection. And we select this one here and double click on this one delete edge and then this one over here. Oh, there's even a small one. We have to clean it up later anyway, so it's not so important to reach them all, but you know, we want to clean that a little bit up. So now to clean it up, when I turn on the vertices, you see what the problem is. We have vertices here in the middle of this long edge, which turns this big polygon into an inside polygon, a five sided polygon. And that's not good. So we don't want that to happen. And one easy way to do fix this problem here in the modeling toolkit, you will find the target weld. So we can take these edges here and drag them on top of each other or these these vertices and drag them on top of each other to weld them together. And actually, you know, this one this one edge here has to go completely. If there are two edges that are merged together, it will clean it up automatically like this one over here. It's not needed. You know, doesn't doesn't contribute to the overall size or overall shape of the object. So I can delete this, but I have to make sure that these often vertex vertices in the middle of the edge um, uh, are going. So this one here can be removed. And of course, this one over here, I have to go closer to, you know, grab these two vertices, drag them on top of each other. And I think that's, oh, here's another one. Drag this one, drag this one. You can, of course, also uh, drag edges on top of each other to merge them together. We will do that in a second. Now, if you have cleaned up everything properly, let's go back to the select tool. I can select the face here and shift double click the next one to select the whole face loop around the body. Because all of these faces are now four sided. If you leave one of the five sided faces in there, it will stop there. 
or you know even worse a triangle it will stop there because it decides where to go by the four sides you know it has one side where it where it touches the next one selects that polygon takes the opposite side and next next polygon and so on so i'm gonna go and extrude the belt out but i want to leave i want to skip this gap here on the side because I want to want the belt to run over this gap and not dive into the gap. We will have problems with the whole extrude function in the gap here. So I'm leaving that out and do the extrude without it. And by the way, you can also select these polygons by holding the tab key, for example, and just drawing over the surface. Very easy to to select things. I'll undo that one. OK, shift right mouse button and extrude faces i'm now just pulling the you know the z translation out here you can also of course do it here in the in view editor do the local translate like so if it's too fast and you want to fine adjust you can hold the control key look now it's much smoother and much finer with the same motion of the mouse cursor you can also hold the shift key and you know do a very quick change of the parameter and you can also when i do when i go back here you can also hold shift and control do super smooth and super slow these settings here are also accessible via this icon here in the in view editor and also in the channel box you see the same icon this is an icon to switch between slowest slow medium fast channel so every time you click you get a different setting and the more blue you see, the faster it is. So this is the slowest setting here um, is equal to holding shift and control. But you can still modify it with shift and control to go even slower if you need a finer adjustment. OK, so let's say the belt is good like that. Our extrude works fine here. And then we go in and want to close this gap here. So I'm selecting an, a face here and a face here. And I want to bridge between the two to get a continuous, um, continuous belt here. So let's go bridge that. And it opens the in-view editor to immediately adjust the settings. This one is fine here. Let's check the other side. Usually there is a little bit of a problem on one of the sides here you here you see a problem you just see triangles so the whole thing the whole bridge is twisted between the source and the target and um, you can use the bridge offset to twist one side around and to make the two sides match so this works better now okay and the next thing that i want to do is to drag these these edges here on top of each other because i you know that doesn't make any sense to have two edges here we have this this step here that comes from the body that's repeated now in the belt and i don't want that so i'm going edge selection and i grab the edges and just drag them on top of each other like so and there are more in the back of the character like here also do this one I could, you know, imagine to fix this one here to get rid of one polygon at least, but you know, it's not it's not worth to dive too deep into it. And to modify these edges now here, it is uh, very nice to know that when you hold Shift and Control, you are move going into the slide mode. So I would slide this edge along its neighboring uh, edges. So now that way I can slide it like here to fine adjust it and to make sure that, you know, this has a, a, a better shape. So shift and con hold shift and control. And you can also, let's, let's say we go into multi-selection here, multi-selection. So I'm taking this one here. You can hold the control key and middle mouse button to move an object in and out of the geometry. So like so. You can do the same thing with edges, hold the control key, move it in and out along its normal. And that way you could find adjust the shape of the belt here a little bit. But I would say so far we are fine. So maybe I would use this one here and slide it a little bit over there. Like so. But it looks okay. I'm fine with it. So now let's go on reconstructing that belt here. I would now model the belt 
traps trap here. So the buckle sits somewhere here and we want to open the belt here and you know belt, create the belt strap that comes out of here. And I can do that by with the multi selection tool select a face and then shift select an edge here and shift right mouse button to do a wedge face. So this wedge again here you can hold the control key to fine adjust the width and or the angle of the wedge and then simply do this. So I'm framing in on this or framing in on this facet here to center my camera around it and to be able to rotate my camera around. What we want to do now is to extrude this and to go on with modeling. So the problem, the general problem with that is that whenever you do that, your the move tool is not adapting to the selected polygon. You see here the coordinate system is the same on this one and on this polygon here. And we want something that allows me to grab the normal of the polygon and, you know, use the other two directions according to the shape and size of that polygon. And we can do that by switching the move tool. When you hold the W key, you know that with Q, W, E and R, you are moving or you switching between the, the various tools. So W is the move tool. When you hold the W key and left mouse button, you get access to a quick access to the options of the move tool. And here I can turn the world coordinate system into an object coordinate system or a component coordinate system, which is slightly different. So watch this one here now. The X axis is always the normal of my polygon and the Y axis is up and down if it's a rectangle and the Z axis is the remaining axis. So when I click on this on um, on this facet here, you see that my Z axis or my, my, my X axis is the normal. And I can do the same thing for rotation and for scaling. So now all my tools are set to component space and I can quick extrude this polygon along the normal. I can then rotate around one of the axes of the polygon and use the scale tool to scale it according to its shape and size. And then back to the move tool and extrude again and scale it and maybe even rotate it a little bit. You get the idea. Okay, one more. And maybe even a smaller one. I can I can already now use the rotate tool and the soft selection, for example, to rotate, you know, to modify the whole strap thing and move it like so a little bit. So it's super handy that this it it gives me a local coordinate system and allows me to move everything and, and shape everything in a local coordinate system instead of the global coordinate system, which doesn't, you know, help me with the shape of the overall thing at all. So let's go and, you know, do one more. Scale it down. Here we go. Good. So the next thing that I want to do is an extra strap here on the side of the belt. So on the side of the belt, there was an extra strap that that was used to hold the sword, for example, or tools that he collected and everything. And I was wondering a while, for a while how to make that, how to reconstruct it. But it's actually pretty easy. So I'm using these two faces here and extrude them. And instead of extruding them out, I'm just doing an offset you know, some sort of an offset depending on how how wide or, you know, high you want this extra strap to be. Then repeat the whole step and do another extrude along local translate. You can hold the control key to fine adjust. And then I would go in and use these two sides of the resulting geometry to create that strap using the bridge. So hold the shift key for the bridge to open the option box and then smooth path and have something like five divisions or so should be enough. And you see, it doesn't seem to work at all. It doesn't look good. And the bridge offset won't help us here. I can twist it around as much as I want. The main problem is that it starts into the wrong direction over here which is the either source direction or target direction. If I flip around one of these directions, it's OK already. So it looks good and we can use that. So now I would take, 
you know, edge selection and double click here on this edge loop. And then yeah, I can move it around. You see my pivot is freaking out completely. Even though I'm on component, uh, on component coordinate system. So to get this pivot right so that I can scale this thing properly in an up down direction. What I can do here is now to, to hit the D key for the pivot mode. Let me move in a little bit and then hover over this edge and hold the control key to orient. I don't want the pivot to move. I want it to stay where it is, but I want it to orient along this norm, this, this edge here. Now, when I leave the tool, you see that now my scaling allows me to do this, to scale the whole width. And we want the soft selection also like so, and maybe make the whole thing a little bit thinner. I could even move it and rotate it. You get the idea. So you see that in Maya 2018, there's a lot, lot of little things that make your life so much easier. Modifiers and things in the modeling toolkit that let you be fast and, you know, instead of diving into menus and setting things in Windows, it lets you modify things immediately while you are modeling.